Well, hello everyone, and welcome to this uh, current installment of Truth Noir. Um, we're uh, we're getting ready to wrap up season three here, uh, which I w never thought would have made it past season one. So yay me! Um, but I wanted to I uh, wanted to thank all of the. Uh, crew and people that have been working with us on uh, the studio uh, not only here but since I've been doing this show um, for all of their help and all of their well wishes and all of their technical expertise you guys are awesome and uh, it's great working with you um, but uh, for this show I wanted to bring on a uh, and I know I say this about all my guests but I wanted to bring on an old friend because he is actually <laughs> um, haven't seen him for a while, but uh, known him for a long time, and as it turns out, he's doing the public access TV show thing as well. And so I wanted to uh, bring him on and talk a little bit about it. I uh, wanted to thank Mr. Tommy McCarthy for coming on. Good to see you again, man. Good to see you too, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, near as I can figure, it's been about 10 years or something, right? It's been a while. <clears throat> that might be a little bit of a stretch. But yes, it, it had been a while, and then we Ran into yeah. each other recently at a, a friend's birthday party. Yeah. And yeah, and then we got we talking about there. all of this, uh, like, oh, you're doing a public access show. I'm doing a public access show, too. Yeah, um, that's right. So, yeah, man. Uh, and then uh, yours was at a uh, different facility. Correct. Uh, and then you're uh, you're going to be uh, bringing it here, thinking about it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, uh, definitely, you know, I came over here and, and, and had the orientation at the studio here, and uh, <clears throat> really, I mean, it's just an amazing facility, obviously, and the people here are all it is super cool. Rocking. So um, definitely something that, that I, I would love to do. We do have eight episodes. We haven't even aired them yet. So uh, I know there are some options there as far as where we're going to air and, and, and then moving forward uh, for, I, I guess, I guess we could call it our second season at this point. We only have eight episodes. So I think it counts. Yeah. I, I mean, it, you know, <laughs> some shows have like six. I mean, the new season of Black Mirror, I think, was like season three was like six episodes or something. So that's true. And the, ep <laughs> and, and the episodes are, are long. There's one <clears throat> that didn't mean for them to go this long. There's one that actually went uh, an hour 45, like almost two hours. So oh, like, wow. not quite as long as you know, like feature like, length, like Joe Rogan. <laughs> but yes, it, it is long enough to be cons to put up against the Black Mirror. Uh, uh, sure, yeah. The, uh, the way that you put it just now. So. Right on, man. Well, what, uh, or actually, let's backtrack a little bit. Sure. Uh, you want to, like, tell uh, everyone out there a little bit about yourself and your background, or? Sure, sure. So, uh, my name is Tommy McCarthy, and I was in a boy band eons ago uh, called No Authority. And uh, during that, you know, during that time, we, you know, we toured with um, Nickelodeon, Disney. We were signed to <clears throat> first to Michael Jackson's label and then to Madonna's label, so you know we were around pop royalty. You know, um, yeah. You know that that being said, we have a lot of friends that were in the business, um, <clears throat> and so now, you know, I came up with this concept earlier in the year, and uh, ended up having uh, one of my my boy band mates, boy band mates. Is that how you would say it? Uh, Eric Stretch. And uh, he is my co-host on the show. Really Initially, fun. we were just testing it out, and it turned out that the dynamic was just super awesome, and um, and we really love working together. So, uh, yeah, we're eight episodes in, and, and looking to get those up and launched on the the podcast itself, and then also the video version. Sure. So, uh, yeah, very excited about that. We it, it, so we have a lot of friends in common, and a lot of friends of our own that are in the in the music business. Uh, entertainment business in general, um, and so the show really is just it's it's entertainers on entertainers, right? It's a, kind of like a peer to peer conversation, like a between two ferns of uh... <laughs> <laughs> correct, as close as you can get to between two ferns without being between two ferns. Um, yeah. No, it's it's a peer to peer conversation about the the entertainment business, basically. Yeah, you were saying I, it <clears throat> seems like you've had some pretty cool guests on your show, and these are just people that you've met. Over the years, yeah, uh, yeah. So, oh, so okay. So, if, I think we're looking at this was right before we shot episode one. This is Eric on the right, and then and I'm on the left there. Um, if we go to the next image, I can tell you. Uh, so, this was our first episode. This was the Secret World of Alex Mack, which was okay. Nickelodeon's biggest show. 
if you didn't know. I know you didn't watch a ton of Nickelodeon, I, well, I guess. We didn't have cable when I was ah. a kid, so I missed out on a lot of stuff. Fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. Well, this is uh, Natanya Ross and Darius Love. Uh, Darius Love also has some really interesting uh, Tupac stories oh, cool. um, that he told on the episode as well. Does so, he know who killed him? <clears throat> well, I, if he did, he wouldn't tell us. Mm. He didn't tell us, or did he? You gotta watch to find out. <laughs> so that, I, should, should that's, I just, that's like the best tagline for a project <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> should, should, who killed Tupac? Will you find out on this episode? Maybe, maybe not. So, uh, I, I'll, yeah, I'll go through. We only have eight, eight, yeah, eight, eight episodes, so I can. Go, I'll, I'll go through them here briefly. Um, cool. So we've got these guys, and then if we go to the next one, uh, so this was cast members from the soap opera Passions. If you recall, that was the one that had the, the little doll, Timmy, that came to life. Um, and it, it, this, ac this actually, uh, one of the trivia questions we ask on the show, uh, and they got it right, this <laughs> was the very last uh, soap opera to be created for, uh, for television. Really? Yep, this is the very last one that was created for TV. Everything, everything that's on now uh, is, is just all just old stuff that's still running, basically. Hmm. This is the last one that was created for, for daytime television, I guess. Interesting. Um, and so we have Christy Ferris and Jade Harlow. Jade is the one uh, in the dark shirt. She actually, she is a daytime, a two-time daytime Emmy, uh, Emmy Award winner. So that was really cool having them on. And they had a really sweet moment uh, yeah. towards the end of the episode, too, that you'll have to watch to see. There were, there were tears. There were tears. Uh, the next, let's see, the next one is going to be, this is Carly Gibson, and her second season of... And as we learned earlier, not to be confused Not with to be confused with Carly, Carly Rae Jepsen. Jepsen. Correct. Uh, <clears throat> Carly Gibson. And her, the second season of The Guest Book on TBS just premiered, uh, I want to see, a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Um, and she plays Tickles. And uh, I believe she, she, she's a, a stripper as well as a proprietor of this place where people go. Are you familiar with the show at all? Uh, I'm not. Okay, so it's, it's, it's uh, the same guy, Greg Garcia, same guy as uh, My Name is Earl, right? Oh, okay. he, he created this as well. That one I've seen. And, and it's actually a very clever, <clears throat> very clever concept. Each week, uh, someone new comes in and the story is about their time spent there and they leave and sign the guest book. So, so you have, Kind of like uh, a like a rotating. I mean, okay. you, have, you have the base cast members, but then you have st you know guest stars come in every week, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, so definitely, she's she's a lot of fun. Um, she <laughs> she gets she she made me blush a couple of times. And I'm not sure the 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 rating on your show if it's PG hey, PG you know, thirteen. I don't censor anyone here, so okay. the, the worst that'll happen is they'll show it at a later time. Well, so. let's. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> I'm just gonna say this. You know, I don't blush easily. She made me blush within like the first two minutes of. The I, I've, I've never known you to blush in the time that I've known you. So. So. <clears throat> take that for what it's worth. Okay, let's see. Who the, the, the next, I believe we had. Um, <clears throat> Now this guy, you recognize that helmet for sure. Yeah, man. I th now this was a show that I watched as a kid. Okay. Uh, now this gentleman, believe it or not, because he doesn't look a day over 20, 25. I don't know. He looks so young. Yeah, he stays yeah. so young. He is the original Black Power Ranger. That uh, that is not the original helmet, but that was made by uh, a fan in, I believe, Japan that made it with his specs and everything, like totally specced it out. Oh, wow. And he takes that to every uh, every convention he goes to. And that's like ready to wear, or yeah, is it, it? it? Yeah, yeah, it's ready to wear. Cool. It's wearable. I was gonna put it on my head, but my head is is huge. I, I, have a very, I, have a large, I have a large head, unfortunately. Um, okay, so yeah, so that's, and he, and he is he's an awesome guy, well, by the you way. Know, really this super guy, nice guy, maybe, Walter Jones. Maybe you can get the Japanese kid to make you... A larger version? A snacky shack helmet. A snacky shack. <laughs> or the, the real is, show cat. This <laughs> is the, the first uh, <laughs> endeavor that uh, we had was uh, he was doing a show called Snacky Shack, which is like a comedy uh, cooking show. Correct, correct. And... Uh, and I, and I actually, we'll, I think we might hear this later. I actually 
I loved the theme song that I'd written for that show so much. It's pretty timeless. I repurposed it Did for the real show cast. Oh my so, so I think we have uh, we have it in there, and it's, it's short. Um, I, I don't I don't I don't want to cut off what we're doing here, but when we're done going through the de- the guests, okay. we'll play it, and I think you might recognize it. All right. So so that's Walter Jones. That's that was a very fun episode. Okay, let's see who we have next here. Now this guy, I don't know if you recognize him or not, but this uh, the guy there on the right. He is on the right. That is JoJo on the radio from KISS FM. Okay. The superstar DJ at KISS that has been there forever. So anyway, uh, Eric and I... Also looks about 20 in that picture. Yes. (laughs) Yes. JoJo will love you for saying that. Um, (laughs) And that's his famous pose. So if you look at his JoJo on the radio Instagram, you'll see he always does that little move and then people do stuff around him. But he, he, I mean, he's worked with everyone from... Uh, I mean, you know, I think last week he was, he was oh, here I am with Janet Jackson, here I am. I mean, you name them, he has interviewed them. So, so when I reached out to him and he agreed to do the interview, I was totally, totally just, you know, humbled by that. Um, and it was fun because we were able to turn the tables. And, and <laughs> so no authority, my old group. We were the very first in-studio audience, uh, or we were the very first show of his <clears throat> where he had an in-studio audience. Oh, cool. Which is now like his big thing, right? Sure. The in-studio audience, the fans come in and, and, and hang out for the interview. We were the very first group to ever do that with him. Nice. And, uh, and so for, for this episode, we turned the tables on him. He came in, we're interviewing him, and uh, we had an in-studio audience. I mean, it was just, you know, it was my wife and Eric's boyfriend, but we had people there, <laughs> right? We had an audience for him. Yeah. So that was really cool, and uh, he's just a super awesome guy. Um, and he deserves all the success he has. If you don't know him, you got to follow JoJo on the radio. I mean, his, that's his handle, and he's hilarious. Cool. So, um, and then I think we have two, three more. This is Delius Kennedy from the group All for One. Okay. Uh, you, you know the song I Swear? Yeah, I remember my mom liked that one a lot. <laughs> I Can Love You Like That. Sure. Those songs. I, I, come on, I Swear was it? That was like, I was in high school. Uh, yeah, that was like the slow dance yeah, number. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, they, yes, they have been around for a, for a long time. And another really cool thing about them is they've never stopped touring as a group. Oh, really? They have been together, the original four, and they still tour to this day. I, I want to say, I want to say it's like 25 years or so, like something, something crazy. That, that is unheard of. Yeah, or ma- maybe even 30. I, I, yeah. I, I might be reaching. I don't know, Delius, if I am, I'm, I'm sorry. But, um, well, because, you know, I mean, that was like high school, right? Or no, like junior high even, maybe. So that was over, well over 20 years ago, And they sure. were together clearly before that, yeah. right? So <clears throat> they, it, it, we might be looking at 30 years, which, no, which, which is really impressive for a group to still perform as the original unit. It's, am- it's amazing, but they're all really, really cool guys. Um, Delius actually, a little fun fact, he shot the photography for my solo record. He was actually my photographer and took my pictures for oh, me. Oh, cool. That's how cool, this guy is a Grammy award winning, multi-platinum artist. Yeah, and still artist. has time to. And he's like, yeah, I'll shoot you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Super cool guy. Cool. He, he also has a show called Flashback Tonight, and he has a lot of fun guests on. Um, a lot of like 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 eighties nineties sitcoms. He knows a lot of those people, so he, he brings them on, and he has musical guests. And uh, uh, anyway, really fun guy. I did not tell him to come camera ready, and I feel really bad about that. He's, <laughs> he's wearing a tank top. He usually is quite dapper. This is my fault. I'll take the heat for this. D, my bad. <laughs> Next, if you come back, you come. You, you'll bring the guys, and you, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, and you'll all come in your white suits, and it'll be beautiful, and and we'll have white doves flying around. It'll be perfect. Um, okay, next we have. Okay, do you do you recognize these folks at all? Can you can you guess? I should have made you guess. Uh, well, I, I, would, done. I would fail on most of these. Man. Okay, like Fair like enough. I said, these are these are like and you didn't and you didn't have daytime the, television, yeah, sure. uh, cable TV, and and that's those are my two weak spots in trivia. <laughs> so so now these 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 two ladies right here. Are super cool. They were in the show California Dreams, California, which was okay, which was yeah. which was I the same. Uh, I, I want to say it's the same producers as Saved by the Bell. 
Yes, and they were the ones that had the band, right? They had the band that they would all play in. Yeah, and then yeah, and the funny thing is, the surf dudes with attitude, right? So yeah. That, so that guy, his name is Brentley Gore. When No Authority broke up, I went solo, and my manager actually managed Brentley, who was the actor that played the character that was the lead singer of their band. Oh, wow, okay. On the show. So, fun, fun little fact, small world, and right I, on, I didn't yeah. even realize that, or think about it until we were you know com- coming together to do the the episode um, but uh, so so then the lady next to me she actually she went on to do Baywatch as well and okay. um, and I believe she's going to be bringing um, some cast members back for a Baywatch episode so maybe that'll be the first episode we do here in this studio. That'd be a hell of a start man. The first, first episode <laughs> yeah. would be Baywatch so, so we'll see who, who, who's willing to come in and help out with that and um and I brought some. I brought some swag for them too. For whoever, yeah, who, whoever crews up with us for that, I've got some. Well, these guys. Got, th- these are now. See, this is what I'm bad at for my show is like merch and uh, hashtag TRSC. All that stuff. Hashtag TRSC. Yeah. So, so this is for us though. Like during the show, we're going to be drinking out of these, all right? So you got like a straw and everything. But then I have some sports bottles too. Um, they're over yonder. Right on. Anyway. Um, do we have one more? Well, sorry, we had, I totally forgot. We, have, we had one more episode. And uh, this is this gentleman here, looking all, all stealthy and, and shady there. Uh, that is the gentleman from American Idol, Corey Clark. And uh, interesting fellow, very interesting fellow. Uh, I, he went into some stuff that I think would make you some stuff scratch, on my show. Sh- scratch your whiskers and be like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm thinking I might have to introduce you guys so, yeah, he, sure. so he can come in here and, 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 and you can experience a bit of what we can, we would, you can dive deeper. Trade, you trade can, conspiracy yeah, theories? Yeah, you can dive deeper probably than, than, than Eric and I did. Eric and I were both kind of caught off guard because the real showcast is usually such a really light, fun, you know, show that is just, just always up. Yeah, and, and, he's, and, and, and this just kept going, going into dark bombs. places, and I'm just like, <laughs> "What's happening here?" Like, <laughs> you hooked up with Paula Abdul. Let's talk about that instead, you know. So, anyway, um, or allegedly hooked up with Paula Abdul, right? Uh, I hope he did, dude. I hope he did, and 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 my personal, my personal opinion, I think yes. I think yes is the answer to that. Um, okay. So anyway, this is. The, I, I, I think it's time to play the song, and then we'll get on. I feel like I've, I've taken up half of your show. You're talking about my oh, show. Hey, it's fine, man. <laughs> okay. I, I really didn't have anything planned for this, man. I just, like, you, you're you doing the thing. I'm doing the thing. We're doing the I thing. Figured, let's do things. the thing. We're doing the things. <laughs> All the things. So that is that is our logo, the real showcast. My wife designed that. Thank you, darling. I appreciate right it. Right on. Um, and, uh, and, and we have a song <laughs> that you might recognize. If we can play it, can we... Can we, can we Play that. Yeah, man, I remember when you wrote this, dude. <laughs> the deal of deals and the rubble rubbles. Completely replay, completely from scratch. Really? And change the way that song. For sure. This is all just you, right? Yeah. Both the dolls, all your all your vocals. Yeah. And it's not supposed to sound pretty, l- lest you believe that. I can do pretty things. That's not one of them. <laughs> no, no. This is meant to to be a, a lead into a show. The people are looking forward to the show starting, so that because, like the, please stop because this the song. song will be over. <laughs> sadly, sadly, it's like a little dagger though, and it shoots into you, and it just gets stuck in your brain. It ramble, ramble, and it, ramble, and it will be stuck in your brain for uh, for the rest of your life. Well, you know, the so. joy in that is I get to infect all of my coworkers with it tomorrow. And mm. like, ramble, 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 ramble. The deedle deedles in the rut. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> You know, it, it, it was. It, I was actually. I was amazed at how catchy, or how much it was catching on. I didn't even realize it until I had a guest come in. And she's she's a singer and a songwriter, um, and she came in and on her phone she brought up a little keyboard, and she actually played the theme song on her phone keyboard. Oh wow! Yeah, and and sang it. So so for that episode, we actually let her sing 
the theme song instead of playing the original. Nice. Which is, it kind of reminds me of, um, do you ever watch Psych? Uh, Amazing show. I've seen, I think I've seen like one episode. I think I'm on like, I've got one episode left of all eight seasons. Or so. it, one of the best, one of the most fun shows. The, the, the cast is just so good, so funny. Anyway, there are certain episodes where they're themed and the theme song, uh, they change it to oh, really? fit the theme. So they'll have, okay. um, you know, one of them, you know, they had Boys to Men do the, do the theme. Um, and then you know, maybe there's like a heavier rock version or maybe there's, it, 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 it's really cool and I didn't need to talk about it's it this like much. the same because it's, melody or? It's or the sa same melody okay. in general. Sometimes they would change it up. Um, but it just reminded me of, of, of that. I didn't, I, I just had a brain fart where I'm like, <laughs> oh, you know what, we, we changed up our theme too once. We're not as cool as psych. I, I, sorry for pretending, Never mind. <laughs> <clears throat> Forget that I said that. Uh, so yeah, man, uh, <laughs> that's uh, hopefully forthcoming here pretty soon. I yeah. uh, I can't wait to see him. Yeah, um, I can't. But, I, but, uh, but I have to wait until after the break, I believe. So so I, I just got to crew up. Wait till after that break. Come in and have, have a have a fantastic 2019. Uh, well, as long in. as it doesn't interfere with my day job, I'm happy to come down and uh, and uh, man a camera or do whatever. Hey, man, I appreciate it. That sounds yeah, great. Man. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. So I, I know here you, you do a lot of the conspiracy stuff. And, and, and you and I, back in the day, had many... Uh, uh, oh, we had some crazy conversations. Fire pit conversations. And many of which I don't think either of us remember. No. But the ones we no. do. <laughs> I, I remember sometimes you would just go off talking about something in, in my mind. I'm, I'm trying to make sense of it. And it, there was just no way that I could piece it together, the things you were saying. So, so it's only fitting... That your that's what your show is about. That makes complete sense to me. Yeah, complete sense. So so I, I, I guess give me a taste of 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 what I mean. Don't put me on the on the spot. But, oh, no. but give me well, a taste you know, of what the show is about. One uh, thing that we try and do is uh, I, I the original incarnation of the show when it first started, we would do uh, conspiracy theories that actually happened. As the stuff that like you might say it to people, and so it's no longer a theory. It's actually just yeah. There's like been cl uh, documents declassified, and this information is readily available. Mm -hmm. But it's some spooky stuff that uh, you know the government did or that happened. Mm -hmm. um, that when you say it to people, people are like, "Oh, that's your crazy conspiracy theorist." And so I tried yeah. to do some of those first. And one of them uh, that's my favorite is uh, is called Operation Northwoods. Okay. Nothing to do with the fantastic restaurant uh, down by where I live, where you throw the peanut shells on the floor. Not the same thing. Is that the one? I think that's the the restaurant they use as the restaurant in um, Fresh Off the Boat. That TV show, Fresh Off the Boat. Is it? I I've, think so. I've never seen them filming there. No, I think they just they just use the outside, the facade. You think so? I think so. I could be wrong. I'll have to take a closer look. It's called Cattleman's Ranch on the show. Yeah. It's but a funny show. I like that It's one. a great show. Larry. Funny without a laugh track even, which is hard. Yeah, they, they don't have to force you to yeah. laugh. It's actually, it's actually cleverly written, Yeah, which is good. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so Operation Northwoods was a proposal written by the Joint Chiefs of Staff mm -hmm. uh, during the Kennedy administration mm -hmm. to uh, have an actual, instead of a Cold War, where it was like this war of ideals and we piss away money racing each other to the moon and who has the best spy satellite or whatever, yeah. uh, they wrote this proposal to actually engage in a, and provoke a hot war, boots on the ground, and their proposal for this was to incite a war between the United States and Cuba, hmm. where... Uh, Cuban nationals would, and see if this sounds familiar to you, would hijack American airliners, fly them over to Florida, and crash them into tall buildings, hmm. causing massive loss of life and enraging the people, so they hoped, to finally, instead of saying, no, we don't want a war, let's, we, we already had World War II, like 20 right. years ago, right. to actually, to gain public support. To get behind for, that, yeah. Yeah, because <clears throat> then they will have attacked us. But sure. this is a proposal that would have been completely staged by our government 
for the purposes of sending our troops to Russia or Cuba to go die in another war. To what end? To defeat communism. Mm. Like to physically defeat communism mm. instead of just trying to spend them into poverty. Right. Uh, and so, but I mean, what does that sound like to you? <laughs> sounds, sounds pretty similar to something that happened uh, uh, in the month of September 11th. <laughs> something it's, something know, along those lines. And, you know, it, it's just one of those things where I say that to people mm -hmm. and they're like, well, no, it's just a conspiracy theorist. And uh, But y there's a good uh, resource website uh, hosted through the University of Washington uh, at Georgetown called uh, the, it's, it's called the, the National Security Archive. <laughs> The hmm. NSA. The NSA. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the uh, largest single archive of uh, Freedom of Information Act documents okay. in one website. And so uh, there's all kinds of fun stuff there. And when I had more time on my hands, uh, it was a fun thing to go rooting around. And, you know, when people say, it's you know the past is prologue kind of thing, and I think this is definitely proof. Hmm. Like the blueprint for that already existed, and when people say, "Well, our government would never do that to us," mm -hmm. you're unpatriotic. It's a fun thing to take them on a little internet cruise and be mm -hmm. like, "No, this is here. It is. It's not even redacted." Mm -hmm. Now, of course, uh, Kennedy wouldn't allow them to do that, and he ended up dead a few months later. This was so. This was one of your first episodes that you did. Uh, this was, I probably think, probably episode five or six. Okay. Or something we first started really going. Unfortunately, man, we're uh, we're running out of time, so I can't really delve into the full mysteries of truth. Can you give us the, 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 <laughs> the big the big one to look forward to next season? Uh, I don't have it uh, established yet. That's a mystery as well. Yeah, that is also the part of the thing that. Uh, I like to do here is keep people guessing, including myself. That's that's the way to do it, man. That's so, the way to do dude, it. <laughs> so good to see you again, man. Me too. I look forward to many more. Uh, Tommy McCarthy with the Real Show cast. Uh, look for it coming up on Pasadena Media pretty soon. And uh, in the meantime, wherever you're going, get there safe. Bye.